Welcome to Leo Casino, saxophone player extraordinaire, good friend of mine that I've known for many, many years. How you doing, Leo? Great, great. great. Leo, Leo, first I want to ask you, I, in doing this movie, I was up at Jeff Lemlin's house going through his record collection. And I never knew, you were in Nouveau Riche with Debbie and those at Bobby Tech. Right. Tell me a little bit about how that happened. Uh, that was, uh, uh, I guess a different uh, scene. I think it was planned, uh, first of all, with uh, Myron and the Two Wives. Myron and the Two Wives, right. And then I think I went down to, uh, uh, I started working with, with New Reese with them. Right. And uh, I think it was uh, a great group, and I thought it had a lot of potential. What, what, what happened to them, you know? Uh, Typical band stuff? Or? I think, you know, there was a lot of personality, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't have a problem with anybody, but everybody, you, you remember know. Bobby Tack was in the band at that yeah, time, right? Really. Yeah. But, so, you know, it was a great band. And uh, I remember we did a song uh, after the siege. Where we went out to uh, uh, one of the... Uh, Military, big armory. Right. Okay. And we did a photo shoot. Right. And we did like yeah. assault rifles. Yeah. And it was this one picture where we were like looking through a hole. Yeah. And everybody had guns. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember yeah. I said, boy, oh boy, I hope that I'm gonna have, you know, the guns are loaded. Because <laughs> you know, that was back in the days when we were getting a better. You know, well, that was that was right after the Miami riots that they had down right. here. And, um, I believe it was a police to lock him McDuffie. They jumped yeah. him and beat him up pretty bad. And then there was another one, like in '83, yeah. I think, with police officer Lozano. He killed two youth on a motorcycle. Right. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I think I was with Debbie and. Uh, Year or two. Right, so that was during that period? Or there's a recording. Yeah. And then I think when the lineup changed, yeah. happened, it, it took a lot of the uh, the energy and the spirit from the group. Yeah, that, that usually happens. So you got a good chemistry and you screw with it, you know, trust me, I know. And, 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 <laughs> you know, and then I think uh, the uh, guitar player, uh, what's his name, uh, Barry. Yeah. He was, was that Barry Cyber? Yeah, Barry. Yeah. And he was uh, Debbie's brother-in-law. Okay. And then, you know, with Bobby Jack. So, you know, a lot of times when, you know, you have intertwined family with musicians, and, you know, yeah. it, you know, it clouds up, you know. The pecking order gets all sorted out. Yeah. Something happens at the house, you know. Yeah. You know, right back to the, uh, the band. Where did you record the, the, the record you guys? Did you remember? Did you record that at Saint? Uh, I think we did some at Saint, and then we did oh. some in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Right. Uh, what was that? New River. New River. Okay. New River City. And, and uh, then Debbie uh, built her own studio. Then we went to see it on the Spectrum. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, with Ralph. Uh, yeah, but I think she had a lot of great. She's a great writer. Yeah, she's got another band out now called Mad as Birds. I'm trying to get Debbie to sit down, but she's hard to, you know, nail down and sit down. Talk. I've got Bobby, I'm going to interview Alan Portman tomorrow from the sick list. Now, you also play with Charlie Pickett a lot. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, Psycho Day. Psycho Day. <laughs> and, uh, you like to say, like, does that like him? You know, that yeah, Woody uh, Allen? Yeah, like, Meat Loaf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Grace Jones. Yeah, let me, let me. about the same kind of going to And, uh, you know, like a lot of times, you know, when we were playing with them, uh, I think it was kind of like a novelty. Right. You know, because, you know, uh, you know, it didn't seem like, you know, you know, we think of, you know, like, uh, what do we call ourselves? What kind of music do we call ourselves right like there? Uh, New Wave Punk. New Wave yeah. Punk, you know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that wasn't typically the type of uh, musician that you, you know, so Right. And I think that, you know, helps us out in a lot of ways because, you know, it's always something different. Yeah, it was something. I interviewed Bobby Boom Boom Gold. Okay. And he told me that you guys uh, you know, once were in a band called uh, Crawling King Snake. Is that right? You remember that? Mm -hmm. And 
you got John Lee Hooker's autograph for Drucker, or he did, I guess, I'm not sure. How was that? I mean, I, did you guys ever cut any vinyl on that? Uh, no, we did quite a bit of work. Yeah. Uh, I guess that was about in 80, it was in 82. 82? No, no, after that. After that? Okay. I, you know I, how that goes after a while, all those years started. Yeah, I know. Well, while I'm doing this, I'm learning a lot. Because yeah. when you're in a band, you're in your whatever circle, and you know, you're kind of like, you don't know what's going on out there with other people. And I, this is a huge learning experience, you know. What I was going to ask you, do you think that that could ever happen down here again, or would you want it to, you know, the, the, the atmosphere of those bands, those creative bands? And, it, you know, it was different. The musical scene was different. I liked it a lot better back then. Yeah. Because there was even more camaraderie between the bands and just being in competition. Yeah. You know, this American Idol. Yeah. Mentality. Yeah. You know, like back then we all knew each other and right. a lot of us built the same shows and everything. And so I think it was more interactive now than just the same of, uh, competition. Yeah. Well, it's not the interactive. I'm calling the movie Invisible Bands. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's like. Uh, I talked with Jeff Lemlick, um, you know, about the 60s scene, the 80s scene, and the 90s scene. And in the 60s, you know, you had, you know, garage bands that put out records that got on the radio and that actual record companies would pick up. Same thing with the 90s, with Marilyn Manson and all those people. But from the time that, you know, that I'm talking about, no... It was like a, you know, none, none of these bands got in, you know, got picked up by a major label. No radio airplay, um, you know, commercial airplay backed them up. So, you know, I guess what you need is we had the journalism back then, and we had the bands back then, but without radio, without the, without radio, without those three things, you don't have a scene. And I think that's what was missing. So radio would not. And the internet, if we'd have the internet. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I think that we can bring a lot of that back into the music industry just by telling them how it was. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to look at. was a great era, though. Yeah. And I really appreciate that, too, Greg. And you, you've always been one of my favorite singers. Well, thank you. I mean, one of the greatest writers, too. Thank you very much. I and I'm really honored that you would have me do that. Hey, I'm honored that you sit down and talk.